So you come to a point now where even this starts to seem like a sham. You know, but the next trick, the next trick which the mind will play is playing on many of you. And we already had this one satsang which is labeled, what's the point? You know? Because once we come to this point where we see that this personal seeking, the seeking for freedom also, was just personal, it was just egoic, then the question comes, so what's the point? <laughs> and I want to speak a couple of minutes about this, what's the point of satsang? And it can get confusing, because we say that what you are is ever free. What you truly are, that cannot be bound. And the person, the ego, can never be free because it is only just imagined. So if what you are is always free, and if the ego will never change, then what's the point of satsang? It's a very valid question. Many of you are encountering this, isn't it? Yeah. But there is something which is getting missed out in these two perspectives. So one, we are taking the absolute perspective as awareness, and it is true that as awareness, you can never be bound. You see? And the other perspective is this personal perspective, the imagined one, as I say, which is the ego. And saying that we often say that the mind will always talk about you as a person, so don't expect it to change. So then what is the point? The point of satsang is that we come to a place of unassociated being. And for those of you who are new to satsang, they might be confused now between awareness, beingness and person. So let me quickly, quickly go through those as well. So when we speak about person, we are saying this idea that I am a separate entity, I am an individual, I am that which my name refers to. And it is not the body. What my name refers to is not the body. The body is just a part of what it refers to. Because the body is unconcerned about relationships, unconcerned about being a father, mother, daughter, son, parent, all of these things, it is unconcerned with. It is unconcerned with the amount of money you have. So it is not just the body, there is an imagined entity called the person. When I say imagine, because when you look for it, you cannot find it. Where is the person? You say, I don't know. And yet, you will find that there is a voice, the voice of the mind, the voice of the ego, this thought stream, which is constantly trying to convince you of your personhood. And because it speaks authoritatively, we start believing that, yes, I must be this person. So this is what we mean when we say ego, person, mind. We use all these terms interchangeably. Then the question is, what is this being? Atma. You keep hearing these terms, you see. Consciousness, Atma, Soul, Being, God. But how many are clear about these? Or is it just a label or a concept? If I were to tell you if I'm the sense I am, to many of you this can seem confusing. The sense I am. The sense I am. But if I will ask you, can you stop being? You know, it is clear that there is a being which is here. There is a sense that I am the Atma. I exist. The presence. And in this state, which we call the waking state, it is not possible for this presence to not be there. The sense of being to not be there is not possible in this state. And yet in the deep sleep, in sleep state, even the presence of I am is not present. So 
So if even this I am is not present, how do we know that there is something called sleep state? How do we know I went to sleep? Like I often say that if in satsang it was so boring you went to sleep, and then you wake up in 10 minutes, you know you went to sleep, isn't it? There is nothing to report from there. But you are aware of even this nothing. So this is what we mean by awareness. When I ask the question, are you aware now? Am I aware now? This is the only non-phenomenal experience. Which means, this is the only confirmation you can give without actually tasting anything phenomenal. Am I aware now? You don't see anything to confirm this, and yet you know completely, of course, I am aware. Awareness is here. It is what I am. So when we say that this awareness, this awareness can never be bound, it is easy to take. Yes, this awareness can never be bound. It doesn't want freedom. And then when we check, the voice of the mind doesn't change. Even, if the, even after this discovery that I am this awareness, the voice of the mind is still the voice of the mind, always talking to you as if you are a person. You see? So then we come back to the main point, which is what is the point of satsang? The point of satsang is that this pure presence I am has the power of belief. And it can believe itself to be a person. So the power of belief is the power to pretend. So it is I amness, which is associated as a person, the imagined one. And it is I amness, which is tired of this association. So it brings this appearance into satsang, and it is I amness which rids itself of this association as a person, and it becomes the unassociated being. So when we are speaking as this awareness, as this I amness, as this beingness, this being, this consciousness, has complete control over the power of belief. Complete control over the power of belief. The point of such is only to get you to withdraw belief from this egoic mind stream so that you can rest as the unassociated being, untroubled by this way of suffering, which is all person. It, it, um, sorry. No, so Continue. I was just saying that once it is clear that belief in this mind stream, in this flow of thought, is just the doorway to misery, the doorway to suffering, then our being is unassociated. So I am, says as I am, it is not saying I am the body, it is not saying I am whatever your name is, it is not saying I am whatever identity, father, daughter, son, child. It's pure unassociated being, and this resting as pure unassociated being is freedom from suffering. So that is the entire point of satsang, to get this pretend association broken to get you to a point of unassociated being, in your own presence, which is your own circles, which is you in your dynamic aspect. 